Hey, what's up? I'm KBHD here. This is an iPhone 12 Pro Max, and it's running the software that's gonna be on the next iPhone, the 12S or 13 or whatever it's called. It was unveiled about a month ago at WWDC and it's iOS 15. In this video, I'm gonna show you all of the stuff that I think makes the biggest difference, the new stuff in this new software. Now, I'm gonna do a separate video on iPad OS 15 because I've been using that for a while too, and that's a whole separate set of features and hopes and thoughts and expectations. But again, that's coming in a later video, so definitely make sure to subscribe if you haven't already to be among the first to see that. But in this video, let's focus on what's coming to the iPhone. And I'm gonna go in order of least exciting to most exciting to me. Maybe your order is the same. Also, how about that new wallpaper, eh? I kind of I kind of dig the new iOS wallpapers. I'll link some sort of collection of them below if someone's hosting it somewhere. Okay, so number five, the redesigned stock apps. Yeah, I said it. The weather app is kind of nice now. Now I, I still can't forgive Apple for buying Dark Sky and then just stealing it from Android. Like I, I literally hate that every day. That was the best Android weather app. But they've been building all of that information into the Apple Weather app now, and it's got a fresh coat of paint over everything. There's these big full screen animations. Sometimes it's sunny here and you can see that. If it's rainy, you can see the rainy animation. I imagine snow and hail would look pretty cool too. So that is nice. The iPhone's new clock app also looks mostly the same, but one subtle thing is it lets you type the time for your alarm instead of having to deal with the sliders all the time. So it's small, but I see that as a small win. Safari is a little more controversial, but it's redesigned as well, and it includes an address bar down here now at the bottom, which yes, means it is by definition more reachable, but now it kind of moves around a bit more fluidly. Like it disappears when you scroll, it's looking pretty full screen all the time, but then you can swipe across it to switch between your open tabs, and when you want to type in it, it moves back up to the top. So it's a little more fluid, I think it's gonna take some getting used to. But then last but not least, I want to highlight Apple Maps. Now, it's been the butt of jokes for many years. I still don't use it, but they have been relentlessly improving it, catching up to things like Google Maps and adding features that are pretty unique and, and interesting. So this new version has much more detail and has a lot more 3D models of various buildings and landmarks. Now, certain cities will get it much earlier than others. If you look through San Francisco, for example, way more details, way more trees and buildings are modeled here. If you look through New York City, there's a couple skyscrapers mapped out, but they don't show up at every zoom level, so it's still being built. And if you live in a smaller city, well, you may never see this stuff, but it is cool that they're adding it. So all right, then, number four, FaceTime. I'm separating this out from the other apps because it's pretty important, and let's face it, a lot of iPhone users are about that FaceTime life. And they've added a bunch of uh, tweaks and improvements and new features here too. So there's spatial audio in FaceTime now. So in group FaceTimes, people's voices come from the direction they're oriented on the screen. Uh, there's a new grid view too, so it's neat. You can see everybody. There's portrait mode added, so you can blur your background and different microphone modes. So you can choose standard, isolating voices, or wide spectrum microphone modes, depending on if you have a lot of background noise you wanna cancel, or if you wanna keep the vibe, keep the coffee shop environmental noise. But there's two really big new FaceTime features here, SharePlay and FaceTime events, okay? So SharePlay, this is maybe something we're doing more in pandemic times than ever, but you know how if you're FaceTiming someone and you wanna watch something at the same time as someone on FaceTime, now that's built into FaceTime. So as a feature, you can listen to Apple Music together with someone or watch TV shows or movies on Apple TV with synced playback controls. So one person pauses, it pauses at the same time for everyone. One person fast forwards or scrubs around to show you something, it'll fast forward for you too. Way better than trying to keep this in sync manually. And SharePlay has a new API as well, so obviously apps will be able to build in and plug into this. We currently have the Disney app and HBO and ESPN. I'm hoping for other stuff, maybe like Spotify, maybe Netflix, YouTube would be nice. So these will, these will be added hopefully in the future. But then also FaceTime calls can now be events, meaning you can add them to your calendar. You can also share a link to them, which might sound like a certain other couple apps we've been using a lot lately, like Zoom, which means people on Windows desktops and people on Android phones can click the link and join a FaceTime call. So you can technically say you have FaceTime on Android now.
All right, feature number three. This is called live text. And this, I think, is really smart, really cool. So this is all done on device. And basically now, any image you have with text in it from your camera or just anything in your gallery, you can long press the text in that image and it'll recognize it and let you do anything you can normally do with any other text. You can select all, copy it, paste it somewhere. You can translate it. And I've been messing around with this in various images of all kinds, text, printed, even written text. And it's been pretty good at working really well. Plus you can use that lookup feature to get some serious suggestions that are sometimes useful, especially if the name of the place or company is somewhere in the text, then Siri can find it. Siri's still not that smart yet, so it's gotta be something pretty obvious. It does not work for videos, I've tried, but it's it's pretty great on a lot of photos. And it also works uh, with photos of animals. So I took a picture of this cat and long pressed it, and it tries to tell me the breed. I have no idea if that is the actual breed of this cat, but that's pretty cool that it tried. And it's, it's kind of approaching what Google Lens has been doing for a while now, but even more intuitive since you can just literally long press straight on a photo without a separate app. It just kind of works. This specific feature works with devices with A12 Bionic or later. So not every older iPhone will get this, but it's pretty good. I just like that it's catching up to Google Lens. Now Google Lens will identify more things, like it'll just try to ID anything, the shoes you're wearing, the type of car that drives by, and this is a bit more limited now, but maybe someday in the future, this will do all that stuff too. Okay, so number two, notifications. Now I'm still saying this with a caveat, which is that they still have a long way to go. Android's notifications have forever been way better than iOS's notifications, but they've made some key improvements here and some stuff that I'm happy to see. First of all, again, a fresh new coat of paint. You can see this new design with bigger photo icons, you know, app icons to the left. I love that. That right away makes a pretty big visual difference. And then there's a new feature called notification summary. So if you don't use your phone for a while, basically if you've gone to sleep and wake up or you haven't used it for a bit, it'll round up all your low priority notifications and put them in one place. So that seems nicer than having to go through the whole list and deal with them all. I just don't know what what exactly qualifies as the, the low priority stuff that shows up here. Is it just messaging apps that get through? Is it everything gets rounded up into this? I'm not exactly sure yet. But then you have extra control over what notifications show up because you can turn on focus mode and the person you're messaging will actually see that you have notifications silenced. And that actually brings me to my number one feature by far, focus modes. So, and this actually works universally across all your stuff. So if you have an iPhone, also your Apple Watch and your iPad and your Mac. And as someone who likes customization, who uses an Android phone most of the time for customization, this is the best like version of that I've seen on the iPhone in a while. It kind of feels almost like separate profiles, even though it's not quite that. So check it out. You can go into your quick settings and long press here and you've got a couple focus modes. There's do not disturb, there's sleep mode, but also a personal and a work by default. And each of these settings at a basic level lets different notifications in from different apps and different people. So do not disturb mode silences pretty much everything. Work mode doesn't let your fun apps notify you. Personal mode doesn't let your work apps notify you. And so you can customize what those apps are and who can talk to you in each mode. But then you can choose a bunch of other settings about each focus mode too. So you can have them automatically turn on or off depending on location or time of day. And you can literally choose only certain home screens to show up when you have a focus mode activated. So you can have a home screen set up for when you're at work that doesn't show your distracting social media apps. And then when you switch focus modes or you get home for the day, you can have a separate home screen that shows up with all that stuff or whatever other focus mode you wanna create. Seems like you can just make as many as you want, a gym one, a driving one, a reading, a gaming one, whatever, it's pretty sick. And on top of all that customization, like I said, they sync across all your devices. So if you enable work focus mode on your phone, all of your stuff is in work focus mode and then you get home and home mode gets triggered automatically for location everything starts getting your personal notifications again. So that's pretty sweet. I made a video about why some of Apple's features take longer to build and implement. I'll link it below the like button if you haven't already seen it, but it's a great video, I recommend it. But that's it. Now, of course, there's way more than just five new things with iOS 15. They had a whole two hour keynote. So of course there's lots of small stuff that didn't make the cut for me. Um, things like improved spotlight with way more Siri suggestions, things like 
uh, the improved offline speech to text recognition, which is sweet, and just various performance tweaks and improvements. But generally, I'm liking iOS 15. It's looking and feeling a lot better. And you can let me know if you agree with the order of my top five or not, but it looks nice. Almost as nice as my Skillshare class. Oh yeah, that's right. Some of you may already know that I have made a Skillshare class all about like the way that I create videos. Some of the review videos you've seen, some of the latest videos on the channel and how I go about that whole process from end to end. So Skillshare, for those who don't already know, is an online learning community for creatives where you can find thousands of inspiring classes to learn something you don't already know. So photography, illustration, music, uh, making MKBHD videos. It's funny because I identify as self-taught mostly, like I didn't go to school for most of the things that I do here now making these tech videos, but I always wish there was, there could have been something that I could have followed along that could help lay this sort of steps and fundamentals out. So that's kind of what I've made is what I wish I had back at that time. And I've also gone through other Skillshare courses to learn other people's perspective on doing things. Like there's one specifically on iPhone photography and filmmaking with Caleb and Niles from Moment. You can see the way they do things and the way they think about things. And so just to get a variety of perspectives, you can just have one Skillshare account and then just watch a bunch of different stuff. And there's no ads on Skillshare and they're always constantly just launching new premium online courses. So you kind of just sign up and then just hang out and just watch a bunch of stuff and collect as much as you can. Uh, so if you wanna check this stuff out, if you're interested at all, I'll have a link below with my link. Early signups will get a free trial of a premium membership, which is pretty sweet. And I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.